behind my point frame. I've got myself all ready to mix everything up. I thought I'd run you through the recipe in detail. Um, just fast forward if you don't want to know, but it is interesting. So for my white, I'm using one part of the splashes enamel, 40 mils in this instance, and one part pouring medium, 40 mils, and that will be my white. If I need to make any more up, I'll just do the same recipe and repeat. For my blue, I'm going to be using powder, the um, artist's dry ground pigments. So I'll be using one teaspoon of the Philo blue, plus one part pouring medium, plus one part Floetrol. For my violet, I'm using the artist's dry ground pigment again, the manganese violet, one teaspoon, one part pouring medium to one part Floetrol to make my purple which will be a violet purple, and then a creation of my own colour, a third of a teaspoon of the manganese violet, a third of a teaspoon of the phyllo blue. Oh, I've written that twice. I didn't mean that. And a third of a teaspoon of the pearlescent blue. So fundamentally, it's a third of all of these three to create my own colour. And that will be that. And then I'm not sure if I'm going to add the bronze in at the end, but I'm going to make it up anyway. And because it's an impasto, it'll be one tablespoon of the bronze and metallic, and then 30 mils of the pouring medium, 30 mils of the Floetrol, and I'll bring it up to consistency with water if needed. But I'm not even sure if I'm going to use that. So that is what my plan is. Because I'm using powders, I need to make sure I've got it just a paper mask because we don't want to breathe this stuff in at all. And I've got my torch, even though I will only be using it just to get rid of air bubbles once. So let's go. I forgot to tell you that I use a little bit of binder and this is the product there. It's an acrylic medium by Renoir. And this binder, I add a tiny drop into the pigment. This is how it looked when I used only the, look, there, that deep blue is using the binder, that lighter bubbly blue is using the global pouring medium. So you can see the binder creates a better smooth broken down effect to the pigments. And I just show you here, this is the three part one where I've used um, the phyllo blue, the magenta and the white sparkle. I'll lift my hand up so you can see properly. There you go. And look how that breaks it down really, really nicely. It dissolves that pigment powder really well. And I only used a couple of, well, you know, that would be half a teaspoon. And it just mushes it in and really dissolves it in so that when you add your pouring mediums or anything to it, it is dissolved in nicely and nice and smooth. And this just shows you the differences between the one mixed up with the pigment there on the left and the one on the right. It's foamier and you can see that the pigment's not broken down as well. So the bronze didn't mix down and I needed to add more and more into it and I ended up adding some of this high flow gold into it and I just wanted to show you because it's a deviation from the recipe isn't it and you really do need to be told what's in everything if I'm going to run you through it properly. So just by adding this extra bit of gold in it gave the bronze a lovely shimmer and you'll be able to see that reflect off the top of the paint in a minute if I ever stop. There you go. See how that just added some extra highlights into that bronze. And I just wanted to let you know, I use a 9 to 1 ratio of water being 9, well, 1 flow drill to mix my paints. It's time for the pour. I'm planning on doing the ring pour over here. So I'm going to have a bit of negative space over here. So I'm going to use the Philo Blue and a little bit of the bronze just to paint a bit of a background like this interested to see how translucent that phyllo blue is I probably could have added a bit more of the powder in and that's a nice lesson for, for me I um, 
have had about an hour since I've mixed the paints to till now. I um, decided I just wanted to let the paints sit, especially the the powdered pigments. Isn't it funny how I can't talk and do two things at once always? All right, I want to try and leave some of that blue striking like that. Just come around the edge there. I've got too much paint on my canvas um, for the effect I was looking for. So now I'm just going to push it back off, off it in the direction that way. I like that. A bit of bubbles away. I'll pull that gold there. Come back under my canvas on the side, making sure the side's done. And I'll leave the. Oh, I feel like I just want a little bit more blue. Isn't it funny how. This is a test canvas for a big canvas. I'll just go and read the size of a canvas. Seventy-five centimeters by hundred centimeters. Um, that's the canvas I want to do this on. Now I'm not going to do. Um, a double pour but I sort of am so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover this side here with the white and then prepare my ring and do my ring over it so I'm going to sort of do it like this well not sort of I am doing it like this because I'm reminding myself that the the effect partially comes from the paint on the paint loads of paint there I've really loaded that up like super loaded it up oh what's that there's a sleeping bag being pulled out behind me all right can you see how much paint there is I'm pushing some off and I've decided to use a polystyrene cup to do my layering in I can't actually, can you see there? I might try and do it like this. So here I go, some white. Some bronze. Some of the made up blue. Some of the violet. some of the phyllo a little bit more white and I'll just do all the colors again one more time it's loads of pain isn't it And here I go. I'm just going to give this a quick torch. There's just a few bubbles and I don't want them to come up through the paint afterwards. I'm feeling really hopeful just based on the notion of the softness of these edges here now. And I can't stop fiddling, can I? And I'm putting off the pour. Come on. Just get on with it. Here we go.
blue's really taken over. Doing some twirls to make some extra patterns in there. It's like, where's the white? Come on, white. Well, that phyllo blue takes over massively. Come back on itself. Get my finger ready to pick it, pick it up. All right, and now I'm gonna be patient and wait a little bit before I tilt, even though look at my hands, they're going to, to tilt it. And it's only because it looks like my canvas is a bit uneven and I've got some sliding happening this way. So I'm gonna go and get a couple of little things and oh no, I'm not, I'm just gonna help it do this for a minute. That's better, even though it's rolling back this way. I'm just gonna wait to see when it stops. Is it ever gonna stop? I'm going to leave this now for about 20 minutes. I think I'm going to have to move that back before I come back and tilt it. There's actually quite a bit of sun on here. I can feel it. So I might even need to come back sooner than the 20 minutes because I don't want it to form a skin. I'm going to give it a quick torch just to get rid of the obvious bubbles so that anything that wants to form can do that now and hopefully not stretch out too much. did that to help any other air bubbles rise to the surface and it's looking pretty good nice and smooth all right see you in about 20 minutes oh do you want to have a zoom in and see what it looks like so far oh I've got paint all over the uh, phone here never mind looking promising and exciting don't you reckon we're having a little look at it it's about 10 minutes in and look at the blossoming and blooming that's happening there's quite a ridge and edge there let's see if we can go down on the side you can see that it's quite a height difference I feel like this is, yeah, it's really dry. Really interesting. I know that that cooled off, but it was quite sticky. It's because it was quite thin and translucent, remember? All right, let's wait our final um, next 10 minutes. And then we'll come in and tilt it. I decided I'm gonna take the uh, brush out now and let it naturally come back upon itself because it has been sliding a lot that side of the canvas compared to when I put that brush under and just see what it does naturally organically um, with its movement as the paint tries to self-level or in this case tries to escape that direction off the canvas that way that way oh hang on that way yeah It's tilting time. Look, it's looking really good. Like we've had fluffy things form out, but I'm nervous as heck. I went back and had a look at the way that Melly D ooh, tilted and it was sort of in circles. So 
I'm going to just give it a whirl. I'm going to chuck my gloves on. In the half an hour um, wait, I was just pottering around doing other things, coming back and checking it, and I took photos of its progress every 10 minutes. So I don't know when I edit this video if I have already shown you them or not but it'll be good just to see how things go. All right, I'm gonna be really careful. I'm gonna do go in circles, not too many. Um, and just try not to over tilt this baby and I'm gonna be strong and step away. In the words of Melly D, um, when the time comes, I'll know intuitively and I'm gonna put it down and leave the house for an hour or so. How's that for um, having to implement self-discipline? Ooh. Look there, you can see where the skin for has formed. I might have left it almost too late um, to do the type of tilting we thought. You remember how I was saying that the sun was coming down on it? Doesn't it look... Um, Sorry you've got the back of the canvas for the minute. We will get there. I just want to get rid of some of that there. Bring it back over there. And I actually don't think I'm going to do too much more to it. Just knowing that it is still organically um, producing fluffy effects and clouds. Because that's what it was doing while we were waiting for it to um, take form. I just might get a little bit more down this way. Look at that. I'm going to let that pour off and bring it back over, up, coming back now, and I've nearly got to put it down. Oh, I wish someone was here to help me just know when to stop. I'm just going to let that go over the two-third mark and stretch that top of the white bit out. I don't like those drips at the top, but that can always be fixed. Or maybe it will look cool, who knows? Back this way. This is gonna be my final move. I can feel it in my bones. I'm bringing it back upon itself a bit. All right, that's it. Any more and I'm just gonna be making, oh, look at how that had dried mud. I reckon I'm gonna do it again because I can't stop. And I don't think I'll wait as long, um, the weather here, and I'm doing it outside too. So I know Melly D's doing it in a studio, in, well, in a poor inside space, cause it's winter where she is and it's summer where I am. So of course this is drying a lot faster. Definitely have got some of the effects that we're looking for. Let's get you off. And down. Well, here and we are. Close up. Come on, focus in. Oh, it's getting closer, don't you reckon? I think maybe an over, I've over tilted, and I think, like I was saying, I've let the top of the paint dry too much. Um, we can see some of those fluffinesses that wanting to take shape in there. But not quite doing it but gee getting so much closer so much closer and just also wondering what's going to happen with this as it continues to dry and separate and do its thing because while it was sitting there before it changed um you know i really have got some good depth there this is looking really interesting the other thing i'm interested in seeing is how the two blues dry you know how i made the two blues um, I certainly feel that I would have to add a bit more powdered pigment to that recipe because the blues look quite translucent. Or oh, not too bad, but I think I'd like them heavier. Alright, see you tomorrow when it's uh, dry and I'll show you the outcome. Oh, from here it does look like the Alps, doesn't it? But that's not clouds, that's mountains. Am I going to put the camera down? Yes. Have a great day. Well, here it is. I brought her right out into the sunshine.
just so that you can see those really super nice metallic lines. I really, I do like those metallic lines very much. And as I suspected when I applied this, hey, stay up there guys. Um, when I applied this background, it was a bit too translucent for my liking, but nonetheless, it does make some kind of good effect. Reminding myself it was, after all, a practice piece. Now, the cloudy effect. It is getting there, isn't it? It really is. And I'm thinking next time, one of my mistakes in this one was I left it a little bit too long before I did the tilting. And we can, look, here's a bit of an evidence of that happening where the paint sort of wouldn't roll upon itself because a skin had started to form. The enamel paint does seem to want to make or just seems to dry a lot faster as it does with the global pouring medium. Do I like it? Well, it's okay. I actually think I sort of like it like this. Let's have a look at it like that. Or what about like this? Oh yes! I can see it. Hello dragon head. And I... Oh, what about this? It's a bear print. Anyway, the point is, is that it was really meant to be obviously clouds and it's not. But I can see that some of the effects are starting to be much closer to be cloud-like and I'm still going to be chasing this. So look forward to the next one and come along and learn with me. I really um, appreciate uh, your comments and feedback and I hope that you're having heaps of fun in your creating journey and yeah let me know what you reckon